Well, does the nation know what is coming? Is the public up for a no-deal Brexit we've just been hearing about? Is it ready for battle? And how does a nation as divided as this one possibly navigate a solution when the only thing everybody agrees on is that they are right and the other side is wrong? Well, I'm joined by four interested observers. Faisal Shaheen, the director of CLASS, the Centre for Labour and Social Studies, a Labour Party candidate in the next election. Businesswoman Nicola Horlick, chief executive of Money & Co. Danny Lockwood, publisher of The Press, a regional uh, West Yorkshire paper. And Kate Andrews is the associate director of the Institute of Economic Affairs. A very good evening to you all. Good evening. Nicola Horlick, do you think the public is braced for what is coming over the next few months? I think a lot of people are sick of all of this, are disappointed that we've got really nowhere in the last two and a half years and feel that they elected their politicians to actually come up with something and actually we haven't come up with anything. And we're now in a very precarious and dangerous position. Potentially heading to no deal. I mean, that was Jacob rees last sort of, is it, if nothing totally, happened. We totally just... disastrous if that happened. Do you think the public are ready for that? Stockpiling of drugs? And, you know, <laughs> I mean, that, it, it, it. Well, you know, who knows? I mean, when you have these types of things, of course, there's lots of scaremongering and who mm. knows what actually will happen. But it seems to me that if you, if you ever go anywhere near the Channel Tunnel, it, any slight delay <laughs> does cause enormous tailback. Right. So I think it is going to be pretty disastrous if we have no... Where do you think the public are, Danny? On kind of, are they up for a fight now, do you think? <clears> well? Uh, well, I think there will be if, uh, if democracy is circumvented and the... Uh, the EU's ultimate goal, which to me is to force um, political chaos, a second referendum, and hope to overturn um, that legitimate vote. If that happens, I think um, I think but the country the would be in. Did the public vote for no deal? Because they were told it would be easy. No, the, con the, and the, the I mean, country voted quite clearly to leave the, the European Union, and I think that... 5248, we know that one. So, oh, but did, did they is, are we going over that one again, Evan? Because the fact is this, the people have now sat for two and a half years watching uh, all of these very worthy uh, ladies and gentlemen tonight, talking themselves into ever-decreasing circles of going nowhere. And what no one's asking the question of is, what is on the table, what is being offered to us? Because the only two things I see are either, one, chaos and a second referendum and the hope that we will overturn that vote, I don't think we will, or two, they bring us to our knees and, and force us to accept terms which are just absolutely unpalatable, unacceptable and again would lead to civil strife and I really think it's that serious. I think the people are sick and tired of just this whole very unfunny two and a half year pantomime and they just want now to know what is on the table from the other side? What is Michel Barnier offering? I actually offering? tried to ask because that at the beginning, and, but it and wasn't terribly so, clear, I so have to be honest. What does it matter that all these people are talking like, that, like we're talking, when we don't even know what we're asking for? Pfizer, where do you think we are at the moment? Yeah, look, I agree. I mean, we all agree it's a total mess where we are and we don't know what we're doing. It's 801 days since we voted for Brexit. We still have no idea what we're doing on the Northern Ireland border. We have no solutions to to so many of the issues that Brexit brings up. We've carried on with this delusion over the summer that checkers will work, checkers won't work. I don't know why we're going over this again. You know, it's just embarrassing for us right now that this is where we are. Um, and so, you know, it's incredibly disappointing for people. And I think some people are more worried about what's going to happen to, to their mm. jobs. I don't think they expected a no deal. I think for a lot of us, a British attitude of kind of, it'll be all right in the end, but it's looking but increasingly like But your party is pretty muddled well. on it, isn't it? Your party's really not, not exactly clear. Well, I think it? they've been clear on the customs union. And yeah. I think what's important about where we come from is to say, look, let's think about what, we, what country we want to see. These six tests about, you know, making sure that jobs are protected, making sure we're doing something to address inequality. Um, and so once you take that into account and you work backwards to what the deal then looks like, then, then that's why we say you have to stay in the customs union, right? And, and that's not what's happening in this conversation. It's sort of like Brexit at any cost for the Tories. It's almost as if they're so ideologically wedded to it. They don't care yeah. about the impacts on jobs, on people. OK, Kate, Brexit here. But perhaps more pragmatic than, than Danny here. I mean, do you think a sort of compromise is desirable, achievable? It's looking difficult. If there were to be a compromise, it probably would have been something like checkers. The problem is if you go closer to the Remainers or closer to the Brexiteers, it's not going to get through Parliament. It doesn't add up. So the question now around checkers, which I actually, I don't think it's completely done. Um, I think it's looking difficult. But the question around it is, are you willing to take this to leave the European Union, to have the opportunity in five to ten years to diverge from checkers? Or are you going to risk that it gets worse for your side, whichever your side is? Um, but, you know, 
obviously there's a lot of political ill will towards this proposal. Uh, and I do think it may increasingly be looking like a no deal scenario cool. because nobody does want to make those But no deal, we know that the parliament has a huge majority against no deal. Mm -hmm. So if we slide into no deal, with no evidence that the country want no deal, and no evidence that MPs who've been elected since the referendum want no deal. I mean, that's a tremendous well, constitutional but, but Evan, but the people problem, making, isn't it? The people throwing out the nightmare scenario now are exactly the same people who said we would have economic Armageddon on the 24th of June 2016. What happened? Nothing. We've got lowest unemployment we've had, we've got growth, we've got uh, an economy that is functioning quite well despite the uncertainty. I don't think anybody, we, I don't think anybody said it was going to happen the day after the referendum. I, well, and the I think George is, Osborne uh, did. I think no, did. Yeah, yeah, I think did. did. And the economy <laughs> is like a super tanker, it doesn't just stop, no. you know, so it, it takes a long time. We haven't even left yet. So I mean, there I are some I mean, bad signs as well, are, like yeah. actually growth has been lower than expected oh. and there's been, no I agree that it wasn't the fear-mongering that we oh. heard, but there, are, there has been slower growth. But look, how do we Less Let, investment. How do we resolve this? How do we get out of it? Because, Danny, you, you are totally against the second referendum. Absolutely. But if Parliament is paralysed and is running towards uh, a course... And Parliament is against the second referendum and the yeah. state's own, but, but, primary but legislation, are, well, look, where's look, the problem? Because the British people, if you're sitting outside where I am in Yorkshire, looking down at all these people in this Westminster bubble, swimming around in their little goldfish bowl, talking nonsense to each other and getting nowhere fast, I think you revert to what happened on the 23rd of June yeah, and you follow the will of the people. A parliamentary democracy and our MPs were elected by us and it's for them to try and sort out this mess. But they, they need to step They're up paralyzed. to the... Yeah, the well, I think they're going to have to find a way of agreeing, aren't they? Not because just we agreeing, can't have this but going on. actually fighting for the UK position. To me, what's so depressing is how quickly people faltered away from this idea of getting a free trade agreement with the EU. Having a common rule book in the sense that you mutually recognize each other's standards, that you want to be able to trade, that you want to keep barriers down, that you want to resolve the issue on the border, but to be strong in that. And that, that discussion in the past two years just mm. never seemed to happen. We've wanted to have it. I don't think the other side... You I mean, can't, you can't the, bargain the, with the, someone... The, the mistake was triggering Article 50 so quickly because that Without took away our negotiating power. Because well, actually, got I, don't, the, the I don't think it got. did. I just think that we EU are victims played a slightly of the better game in this. I mean, yeah, I mean, I find it frustrating to blame the EU. It's just a classic position. Actually, it was on us to offer deals. Yeah. You know, you hear Boris come out today and say, oh, we didn't even try. You've been part of the cabinet for two years. Where was your plan? We've had people, you know, have want Brexit for decades. Where's your plan? So I don't, I don't think it's good enough. I don't think we should just, res you know, resign to like blaming the EU again. I think we have to understand that our politicians have let us down. And, and for me, because Brexit isn't just about the EU, actually, for me, it's about a whole bunch of, a lot of people see it as a kind of, you know, an act of anger, anti-establishment. There's, there's evidence to show that austerity had had something to do with the Brexit vote. For me, it's actually maybe we need to think we're going to come to a point where we need a general election rather than a second referendum. Well, which, party we is look gonna, at which party actually wants to commit to you know, a fundamental one-pathway Brexit strategy right now? The answer is all, and certainly not the major two parties. Nobody wants to do that. Um, and you know, I, I agree with you. We can't blame it on the EU. Frankly, a lot of the issues that are blamed on the EU are domestic policy mm. issues like housing and, and mm. welfare and all sorts of issues. But we, we can't do that. But I think well, it would be... I think be... we can. No, I mean, <laughs> we, 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 I, think, I think we would be wrong to do let, that. Let, but let me ask, what about this option of the Nick Bowles option? Let's pause Brexit oh. for a minute, go into the EEA, park there for five years oh. at our oh. leisure, oh, work out the Nick Bowles. That's, now, does that's that... wonderful. No, absolutely not, because whether you're going for... Norway, Norway plus, Norway like, Canada plus, Czechos plus, plus, we're going to go for the EFTA, we're going to go for the EEA. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to kick it into the long grass until everybody's died an old death in poverty. You know, we, this has got to happen within the time scale and it's got to be a two-way two deal. And that means something's got to come back. Michel Barnier, Jean-Claude Juncker, you know, Mrs Merkel, they've got to put something on the table that we can consider. It isn't just about us. It has got to be two ways. What do you think of the, the, the pause, the, the, the EEA, go, go full Norway and then in, in, at your leisure you can try and find Canada in if five If the years. UK were guaranteed the Norway option for five years with a sunset clause, I think that would actually be very worthwhile to consider. But of course, that sunset clause may never actually 
set. And I think that is an more concern, right? The, the, well, then, well you, 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 you might have an election, well, yes, you would have an election mm -hmm. before, but even then, the terms and conditions and the way that it's framed would have a lot of Brexiteers feeling like Brexit wasn't actually going to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot to be said that, you know, when you ask your politicians to do something in such a meaningful way like the Brexit referendum, for them to say this is going to take five to ten years is pretty ridiculous. They've had two and they haven't done much. Why would we be convinced they do much but more? I mean, a lot of the, like the Canada deal took many years to achieve. But I mean, I think something to be said about what people wanted. There are a huge amount of lies that were told and delusions. And one thing that I think of, and I you know I, when Brexit happened, I was like, okay, well, let's look at how we can get a progressive trade deal. What can we do here? And it just seems more and more as if this isn't possible to get something that will result in some economic empowerment of the UK because our relationship with the EU well, is like the scrambled in in and in and in and of itself. It's been a, com a complete, in lots of ways, we've it feels like a waste of time and I feel like there's out, lots of other issues to just about out of time. With. I just want to ask Nicola, do you worry if there was a delay or if there was a second referendum, and I know you would rather like a second referendum, that the country would rip itself apart as it, in the argument over it. I think there has to be a second referendum because we're not getting anywhere. The politicians are not getting anywhere. We started this with, I don't fundamentally agree with referendums. That's not part of our constitution as far as I'm concerned. But that's where we started and I think that's where we have to end because we haven't had any resolution of the issue through negotiating through our politicians. Therefore, I think the people have to speak again. Well, I'll be marching down the M1. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much.